My name is Henry Holly. I served in the United States Marine Corps uh, during the World War II and the end of it and Korea War. Did 22 years and retired in 1967, whereupon I went with Billy Graham and I was with him for 48 years. I was in the uh, military. I joined in June of 1945 which was close to the end of the war, although we didn't know that. And upon graduation from Paris Island, we were assigned to a replacement battalion to go to Okinawa to uh, relieve some people, uh, troops that had been there during the campaign. And of course, little did we realize, we were aboard ship and uh, the war ended as far as Okinawa was concerned. And then we dropped the bomb on, on Hiroshima on August the 6th and on Nagasaki, Japan on August the 8th. And so our ship was diverted from going to Okinawa. Going in place, we went to Tsingtao, North China, because at that time there were 600,000 Japanese in China. We lived out in the country and uh, didn't have electricity, running water, or heat, or anything. But we, we didn't know it. We were poor and didn't know it. But my daddy had built a radio set, a, what we used to call a crystal radio set. And uh, he was listening to it on Sunday afternoon in Houston and heard the announcement about Pearl Harbor. And he called the family together. And as he was listening on the earphones, he was repeating to us what was going on. And so that was Sunday afternoon. The next day, December the 8th, every boy in our high school went down to the recruiting office. We, we were determined to sign up and get into the fray. And, and uh, we were disappointed when we found out that you had to be 17 to enlist and uh, then you had to have your mama's consent. So I didn't go in until another two years. But when I was 17 and graduated from high school, my mama gave the consent for me to go into the Marine Corps. And I'm glad she did, because it was the beginning of a long career <clears throat> and one that I'm very proud of. Basic infantry, just 03. <laughs> yeah. Well, hey. We, uh, uh, the Marine Corps is uh, very famous for its training and the very basics. Uh, we have a fire team of three people. We have a squad of, of uh, three fire teams. We have a platoon of three squads. We have a company of three platoons and uh, Everything is based on number three. And so uh, uh, basically every Marine, regardless if he's a cook, if he's a clerk, or whatever his specialty may be, basically he's an infantryman. And so everybody is trained to be a basic infantryman in the Marine Corps. And I, just, I, I stayed as an O3 uh, throughout my career in North China and in the reserves and I was promoted to a PFC, Private First Class. Now the Japanese had invaded China in 1937 in uh, Shanghai and uh, they occupied much of North China uh, during the war and we're still there at the end of the war. A very interesting uh, history is a book by Iris Chan called Rape of Nanjing. It's a historical fact, but few people would know it. But this is when the Japanese invaded Shanghai, and then they went up about 90 miles west to the town of Nanjing. Nanjing was a capital, the ancient capital of China. And there the city had about 900,000 population 
And uh, within three months' time, the Japanese Imperial Army murdered, slaughtered one-third of the population. They killed 300,000 civilians in three months' time, from December 1937 until February 1938. The Japanese deny it and try to, to say that it was not true, but uh, those of us that were there know that it's true. They were brutal, not only to the Chinese, but to the Koreans and to the Filipinos and to the Malaysians and Singapore, Hong Kong. Everywhere they occupied in World War II, they were brutal. Uh, it's unbelievable what they did. And that's the kind of enemy that we were facing and had President Truman not authorized the use of the atomic bomb, we would have, the next campaign from Okinawa would have been Kyushu, Japan, which is a lower island of Japan. And every man, woman, and child would have fought us. So that's where I came into play, into North China. And we, we landed in Tsingtao, which is a port city up in North China, went to Tencent and Peking. These were the three principal cities in North China. And our mission was to set up the procedures and apparatus for the surrender of the Japanese Imperial Army that had occupied China since 1937. The Chinese welcomely welcomed us with open arms and uh, they were so happy for us to be there. Uh, and the Japanese were defeated and they knew they were. Uh, so there was no, no conflict with either one, either the Chinese or the Japanese. This procedure was recorded in a book that was published while I was in China called North China Pictorial. And a little footnote here says, this is a pictorial of my unit, the 1st Marine Division, Fleet Marine Force, in China during September 45, where we accepted the surrender of the Imperial Japanese Army commanded in North China. The original of this book was mailed to my mother in Houston, Texas, while I was serving in China as a private first class in the United States Marine Corps. <laughs> Within this book here, it's a, uh, a recording of, it may, may not be possible for you to see, but this is a map of China, North China, and these are the three cities, Tsingtao, Tencent, and Peking. This is all about the Japanese uh, ending their occupation of China. This here is surrender in Tencent, where the admirals and generals put their sword down on the table and signed the agreement. Very interesting story about the agreement to surrender. The uh, ranking officer in China at that time was an admiral in the Imperial Navy and commanded all the military forces in North China. And uh, as a courtesy, our general, General Rocky, three-star general, he uh, had called him in and offered him the opportunity to look at the surrender agreement before the next day we had the official uh, surrender signing. And the Admiral appreciated that and took it back to his quarters. And the next morning, he came in for the official signing of the document. All the photographers were, photographers were there, all the people were there. And he asked General Rocky, this is a story that came down to the ranks, and uh, asked him if he would kindly modify the word surrender because that's a hard word to describe in Japanese language. And uh, so General Rocky said, we'll take that under consideration. And then later the Admiral came back and the General Rocky said, uh, we have 
considered your request to modify the agreement. And whereas it used to read just surrender, we have added the word unconditional surrender. Now, do you understand that? And so the Admiral had to agree that he did. Then what we did, our job was to gather up all the military people, take their weapons away from them, and ship all the enlisted men and lower rank officers back to Japan, out of the port city of Tsingtao. But we kept all the senior officers who were responsible for the atrocities, and much like rape of Nanjing in other places. We kept them, put them on trial, executed many of them, and uh, that was the end of the Japanese occupation in China. I wasn't there, but I heard it. General MacArthur, after the dropping of the bomb and the emperor surrendered, General MacArthur, Douglas MacArthur, moved his headquarters to Tokyo to the Imperial Hotel. The story goes, sometimes we people at the lower rank don't always get all the truth of the story, but the story that we heard was that the uh, staff to General MacArthur came to him one day and said, Sir, it would be proper for you to pay your respects to the emperor over in the imperial palace. And General MacArthur is reported to have said, No. No, I'm not going to go see him. He'll have to come and see me. We won, they lost. And then it came back later when the, the emperor had made arrangements to come and pay a courtesy call on the conquering hero, General Douglas MacArthur. All the arrangements were made. And the same staff officer came in to the general and told him, Sir, it'd be best not to have any photographers present because uh, that's a bad omen for the Japanese. And MacArthur said, no, I want all the photographers that we have to be in the room. And furthermore, I want the pictures to be promulgated throughout the entire country of Japan in every newspaper, everywhere to be posted, showing the emperor standing in his formal black morning uniform and me standing next to him, towering over him in my rumpled up khakis without a tie. He said, I want that picture promulgated all over Japan to show that they have surrendered and they are defeated and that their leader came to me. And boy, that was the best thing he did because the whole country realized then truly they were defeated, and the emperor had surrendered to General Douglas MacArthur. Uh, in 1948, I was stationed at the Naval Air Station in Dallas, Texas, at the Marine Barracks. And that's where I met my wife, Betty. And uh, there's pictures all over the house of her. <clears throat> but we were married 68 years. We met on a blind date and uh, fell in love, and within a couple of months, I asked her if she would marry me, and she said she would. You had to have a, an official application submitted to the commanding officer to get married. Uh, and uh, so I complied and submitted an application to the commanding officer at the Marine Barracks in Dallas. And so I went right on up to the skipper, the colonel, and uh, I didn't know what action he had made. He signed the paper and sent it back down to the sergeant major to give to me. And so when the sergeant major called me in, I remember he said, Holly, 
If the Marine Corps intended for you to have a wife, we would have issued you one. But said, here, the skipper signed and approved your marriage, and he threw the paper at me. <laughs> he wasn't very happy, but uh, I was very happy. And so that was the beginning of our marriage with my beloved of 68 years. She died on the 12th of August, 2016. So it's been a year and 150 days since, since she died. And I miss her very much with all my heart. Yeah, that's the second day in boot camp. <laughs> that Marine boot camp is pretty famous for, for uh, <laughs> just, just <laughs> scaring the devil out of you. Uh, and in those days, drill instructors had much more liberty to do what they had to do to mold you as a Marine. But the whole philosophy was to, <clears throat> to break you down to nothing and then build you back up to the, the principles and philosophy and status of what they want in the United States Marine. That's the reason every Marine that ever gone through boot camp, we have the same DNA. And, and you don't have to tell Marines very much. We, we all understand. <laughs> because we're all alike. <laughs> well, yeah, when they had the uh, rationing of, of cigarettes and beer, but uh, when the war was over, there was no rationing. <laughs> <laughs> we had plenty of beer. <laughs> uh, happy times. Yeah, it was a happy time when the war was over. I had two buddies. Three of us all went down and signed up the same day from Houston. We were all, all 17 years of age. And we went through boot camp together. But after boot camp, we were all separated. Uh, I went to the replacement battalion uh, to go overseas. Another one went to Midway Island. Another one went to uh, uh, lost to uh, Camp Pendleton in, out on the West Coast. So we were separated. But uh, yeah, but and we maintained friendship over the years. They're both dead now. I'm in my 91st year and not in pretty good, not in very good health, but I can still get around. You know, it was it was sort of a mixed blessing in a way. We we were all geared up to, to go into the battle and fight. That's what we were trained for. And as a basic infantryman, that's what we wanted to do. And so the, the war was over and there was no fighting, no battle. So we had adjusted our objective and our objective dictated by our generals that were there to to uh, <clears throat> stabilize the country of China and to uh, accept the surrender and get the Japanese back to Japan. Yeah, it was very good. And ironically, <laughs> that you asked that question because I asked the question to one of the uh, forest rangers on duty there. I said, why is it on the, col the two columns? One was a statement of FDR and one was a statement of Walter, uh, I mean of uh, Winston Churchill. And uh, for, the, for the Atlantic and then for the Pacific and the Atlantic for, for FDR. <clears throat> I said, why is it that all the statement of FDR is not included? For example, they had the words of his uh, December the 8th address to Congress and he concluded that uh, we, shall we shall overcome, so help us God. That was left off, that last phrase, the forest ranger. He said, well, as I understand it, they had to do that in order to make it equal. And I said, no, that's not true, you know that. <laughs> and he kind of laughed and left it off. But no, it was politically correct. <laughs> well. The combined effort of boot camp and following and uh, taught me all the principles of life that I now embrace. Uh, integrity, uh, discipline, uh, 
to respect for authority. Uh, these are all basic uh, teachings that we learn, not only in boot camp, but as in, a, in the service, we learn from others. And uh, we went in as boys, but we came out as men because of that. Yeah, well, it was a day of, of acknowledgement, of uh, service, uh, sort of a mixed day of celebration as well as uh, remembrance. Uh, Veterans Day is very, very significant. Of course, it goes back to, that's, again, that's a day that we used to know as Armistice Day. <laughs> I can still wear my dress blue uniform, as you see there, and I get into it every now and then. On Veterans Day, I get into it. And uh, this, this was a couple of years ago. I was my wife with me, but uh, my friends tell me that, uh, or accuse me of, of the Marine Corps having a uniform made out of spandex. And I said, well, maybe so, but <laughs> it still fits. <laughs> still fits. Well, simplify. Simple fidelity is always faithful. Um, yeah, Marines, uh, you get a bunch of Marines together, you don't have to tell them much. We, we all seem to have the same DNA. We all know what to do. And it, uh, yeah, it's, it's an amazing group of men. Yeah, I'm, I'm very grateful for my service in the Marine Corps. Very proud. Well, it's a symbol. It's only fabric, but it's a symbol of many things, or emotional things, or factual things. It's, it, it's a remembrance of who we are as a people, that we have freedom, and freedom is not free. Those military that have served realize that more than anyone else that freedom is not free it's costly the number of lives that were lost we had over 420,000 troops killed in World War II 